a um, SST. Uh, there, there are a couple of different other names. The SST is kind of the generic name that you'll, you'll see. Um, every ventilator is a little different, and there are far too many ventilators for me to discuss um, every SST that will occur. And I may post some videos later on of uh, doing some, some various... Um, doing some various things on ventilators we we have a, a servo i that we use in our lab in addition to a, a pb7200 and then a couple of other ventilators uh, i may do that uh, at this point uh, i just want to get through some of the theory uh, first uh, just to kind of help people out that you know are watching these videos and studying for exams boards and what have you so the sst is very important the ventilator uh, checks itself checks its alarms, uh, checks the, the tubing compliance. Um, because what happens is, uh, as I'm pushing gas through the ventilator tubing, of course the ventilator tubing um, does have some, some compliance to it, some, some give to it. Uh, when I put some pressure in the tubing, the tubing is going to expand out. And what can happen is you can lose uh, volume when that occurs. And um, how much volume you lose is dependent on the different type of tubing. And, and normally when you do an SST on a ventilator, it does its own tubing compliance test, uh, a circuit compliance test. Circuit and tubing I, I use interchangeably. Now, some of the older ventilators, however, do not um, compensate for the volume lost in your circuit. And you may find yourself doing a, a manual uh, test. So what we do is it's nothing, the calculation is no different than any of the compliance calculations you've done up to this point. Uh, when we talk about lung compliance or compliance in general, the, the formula is the delta V is in volume, the change in volume over the delta P, the change in pressure. So it's change in volume over change in pressure. So what I have up here on the board is just an example. I have an older ventilator, I need to do circuit compliance tests, and you will probably run across questions like this on your exams as well. Uh, so it's certainly worthy of going over. What you do is you dial in a very, you put a very low tidal volume. Generally I use uh, 100 milliliters. Uh, they recommend anywhere between 1 to 200 milliliters. I use 100 milliliters because generally the math is a lot easier. You go ahead and put a 100 milliliter tidal volume in, you set whatever rate you want, uh, generally a little slower, and that allows you to look at the PIP or the peak inspiratory pressure. So you set the volume, and then you occlude the end of the circuit. You occlude it with uh, the hard plastic cap that comes with it. The ventilator will deliver a volume, that 100 milliliter volume, and you will see a pressure on either your manometer or your graphics interface, you know, whatever you're using. Generally on the older ventilators, it'll be some sort of... Um, uh, manometer that you're looking at, but you'll see a pressure. And in this case, what I've done is I've said, okay, well, I put in a 100 milliliter volume, it delivered that volume, and I looked on that manometer and I saw 10. And that's enough information to calculate circuit compliance. So what I do is compliance is nothing more than change in volume over change in pressure, right? What is the change in volume? Well, my volume went from 0 to 100, so it's very simple. My change in volume is 100 milliliters. Change in pressure, I went from 0 to 10 centimeters of water pressure. That's uh, uh, my PIP or my peak inspiratory pressure. So that's 10 centimeters of water. And then I just uh, solve this, knock a 0 off and that gives me 10 milliliters, one centimeter. So what that tells me is for every 10 milliliters per centimeter of H2O. What does that tell me? Well, that tells me that if I were to put that ventilator on my patient, every centimeter of water pressure on their PIP on the patient's PIP, for every centimeter of pressure encountered in that tubing, I am going to lose 10 milliliters of my volume. So, let's say that I now put this tubing, because this is the tubing compliance, 
I put this tubing on my patient and I set their tidal volume at 500 milliliters or I have an order for 500 milliliter tidal volume. I go ahead and put them on 500 milliliters and then I look at my PIP and let's say that my PIP is 20 centimeters of water pressure and the question is are they getting that 500 milliliter tidal volume or are they losing it and, and clearly they are losing it because we do have um, what we call anatomical um, dead space that's about one uh, milliliter per pound of a weight of a patient of ideal body weight um, but are we losing um, mechanical we talk about mechanical dead space and that is space in the circuit, the ventilator circuit. And in fact, we are, because we know for every centimeter of water pressure, I'm losing 10 milliliters of mechanical dead space. So what I'm going to have to do is I want to calculate and I want to find out what the ventilator is really delivering after it's gone through the tubing. Well, what I do is I, I know I have 10 milliliters per centimeter, right? So for every centimeter water pressure, I lose 10 milliliters. Hopefully everyone would agree. I have 20 centimeters, and I want to know how much I'm losing. So this becomes a fairly easy uh, math problem, a dim basic dimensional analysis. I cross multiply 1x equals, well, what's 20 times 10? Well, 1 times 2 is 2, and then what do we do? Well, we add the zeros, 200. So what that tells me is 1x equals 200, x equals 200 milliliters. Remember, milliliters on bottom, centimeters of water on top. So what this tells me that is if that PIP is 20, I'm losing 200 milliliters of my tidal volume. So in fact, the ventilator is only delivering, if, if it's set at 500, I'm losing 200 milliliters. The ventilator is, in fact, only delivering 300 milliliters of tidal volume, and I may have to increase the tidal volume by 200 milliliters. So I may actually have to give 700 milliliters because I know that I'm losing uh, 200 milliliters the tile volume and I'm only getting 300 milliliters. Now I want to be very clear, we don't do this manual calculation on every patient every time we hook somebody to a ventilator. Most of the modern microprocessor ventilators incorporate this into that SST and that's actually why it is so important to perform that SST because the ventilator will then know how much volume it will lose to circuit compliance basically to mechanical dead space. Um, now this is not physiological dead space, that's something a little different. That's you know in the airway itself, that is you know air, that basically air uh, that is not um, not being in the process of gas exchange, so in your your conducting airways basically. Different concept than the concept we're talking about here. Again, this is something that you would do on an older style ventilator uh, where they don't have that SST option and you actually have to manually calculate um, volume loss to circuit compliance. It's not something we do commonly, but it definitely is something that they put on tests. Um, one more thing I want to emphasize is if for some reason they were to say the PIP was 20 and the PEEP, for whatever reason, was 5. You now need to realize that <clears throat> my change in pressure is different. I no longer have a change in pressure of, um, of 20. Or actually, let's go back to the original problem here. Get rid of all that. Go back to this here, when I did my initial test. And let's say that I gave you peep of... Five. My delta P is no longer 10 because I'm starting at 5. So my delta P in this case, 10 subtract 5 is 5. My delta P is 5 centimeters instead of 10. Sometimes they like to throw that peep in there. And remember that the, the delta P is the change. So I'm actually changing from 5 to 10 instead of 0 to 10. So don't let that trick you. Okay, guys. 
Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Take care.